Hey, welcome to our very first edition of Best in Boxing. This is uh, Best in Boxing podcast, basically. Uh, typically, you guys would see us doing uh, boxing, uh, actual boxing fights, um, and we've taken a, a pretty long break from all the fights, and um, and now we're coming back. Now we're doing some live stuff, uh, and we're doing some some podcasts. So uh, our very first guest is. Gio, we're just going to jump right in. I'm going to bring Giovanni Gonzalez in. Um, what's up, Gio? It's been a long time, man. How's it going, brother? How are That's you? How's everything going? It's going good, man. It's been what? It's been a couple of years, actually, since uh, we've we've really yeah, uh, had the chance to talk. Yeah, it's been a couple of years, man. Time flies. Time definitely flies. Yeah, so the, for anybody that doesn't know, Gio's... Uh, Gio is a professional boxer. Um, he's got his own boxing promotional company and has done a lot within within boxing. Uh, hometown Stockton boy, um, and uh, is is uh, got a got a really good following online for his boxing. How's how's the career been going? Let everyone know how, how everything's going with it. Everything everything's going great, man. I, I mean, I just uh, training. I got a fight next week on Friday night. I've just been staying busy, you know, staying busy from the boxing side of it and emotional side of it. I also uh, you know, purchased a gym, also a boxing gym out here. So I opened a gym. Oh, nice. Uh, like, yeah. So I've been staying busy, bro. Uh, a lot has, I've just, I've learned a lot throughout the years and staying busy. Good. So then, so then you can add a, a boxing owner or boxing gym owner to the, to your resume. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty yeah. good. Where, where is it in Stockton? For, I bought it uh, about Stockton. ten minutes away from Stockton in a town named Lodi, Lodi, California. Oh, okay, what's the name? Of, what's the name of the gym? Uh, KG Boxing Academy. KG for KG, All right. so KG Boxing Academy. All right, man. For anybody, anybody up in that area, you know where to go now for uh, for boxing training. Do you got? Do you have uh, uh, any professionals in the gym up there? Uh, uh, at my gym, I have I have two two. Professional fighters, uh, uh, Manuel Flores, and uh, we just got somebody that that moved out here from Juana. Actually, turns out we found one of my undercards, and I had no idea. And oh, wow. uh, he happened to live, he happened to move like down the street from the gym, so it's pretty weird. So, uh, yeah, he's he's getting back in shape. He actually was sparring with Nate Nate Diaz uh, two weeks ago, helping him out for the uh, Jake Paul fight. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get everybody in shape and get ready and, and uh, you know, stay busy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so how how is that? Uh, how is the Diaz fight? Uh, what's the, what's the word up in Stockton? Is everyone excited? Yeah, I mean, uh, I go out there to spar, and uh, the gym's pretty packed because a lot of people go out there for sparring and stuff and to help them out with sparring. Um. But it's 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 pretty it's pretty popping out here right now because that fight you know it's in three weeks and uh, yeah it should be a good one should be a good one. So what do you think on that fight? I, I know that um, I know that Andre Ward um, spoke highly of Nate's boxing when he sparred him back in the day, um, and then I've seen a couple videos. He looks he looked early in camp. He looked a little rusty on the boxing side. How's he looking now? So I saw I actually saw him spar two. Weeks uh, when I went to go spar one of his guys, and uh, there was some, some I don't know who the fighter was, but he was like a, uh, like a, he worked with the in the Olympic place for boxing up in Colorado and stuff. So he was a very technical yeah. boxer, and um, and Nate is Nate. He just took around and just kept coming forward, and he ended up, you know, getting the best of the other guy, even though the other guy was technically better. Yeah, uh, Nate's pressure just kind of just threw, threw all that away. He's, he's looking good. He's looking, you know, he's looking good. And and um, I think the fight with Jake is ten rounds. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think, I think it it's is. ten rounds. It, it benefits Nate a lot because he's a a slow starter after the third, fourth round. Then it should get good. I, yeah. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but that's my prediction. Yeah. I, I would I would think that um, I don't know if I was to put money down I'd probably put it on on Nate uh, just because 
I mean, I realize he's an MMA guy. Yeah. At the same time, uh, Paul lost to to uh, what? What was he? Eight no, eight no fight boxer. So that kind of yes. shows where. Uh, that kind of shows where his level's at right now. Um, you know, oh, absolutely. And the thing is that, uh, sorry for, for cutting you off, oh, Jake Paul is known to get tired. You know, he gasses yeah. out. Um, so that's going to be a factor, you know? Be a factor. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would definitely put money. I mean, don't like, there's toughness. And then, the, you know, there's boxing and then there's the tough side. And, and it's just Nate has always had that, you know, he's just going to come and come and come and, and just come after a guy. He's super aggressive. Um, yeah. He's got a tough, he's got a tough chin on him too. So um, yeah. Yeah. it should, I I just can't see um, Paul keeping him off for the entire fight. Right. Um, and just yeah, that's going a, yeah. yeah, that style is very, very uh, difficult, but just to. Gotta yeah. be moving, moving, moving. And, and then when you grab him or he grabs you, um, making you do all the work. I don't know how to yeah. really explain it. No, it's true. It's true because yeah, you, he's got to support all that. Weight. He's got to support yeah. all that weight. He's got to move around, yeah. and then you have to really know how to move. fight like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, um, I think he made a mistake by choosing Nate as his opponent. Um, just like I thought he made a mistake by choosing, you know, choosing Fury um, yeah. as an opponent. And it's like, he's, there's no, I don't question his work ethic because uh, obviously he, he's in shape. He works his ass off, but he's learning on the job. And yeah. to fight a bunch of MMA guys, that's one thing. But when you step up and fight a boxer, that's a whole nother level. I mean, you, you, you're fighting a Fury whose, you know, father was a, was a bare knuckle boxing champion. His grandfather yeah. was a bare knuckle boxing champion. It's a whole different pe- pe- pedigree. And then you got Nate, who's actually fought a lot of boxers over his over his career for training and training. And he's a younger guy. He's not like one of these old guys that uh, that Paul's fought in in the past, yeah. right? So I, I just thought it was a mistake when he decided to do that. I mean, I think they're going to sell a lot of pay per views. So if the money, if the uh, it's a good, uh, it's a good yeah. money fight, it's definitely a good money fight. But I mean, when it comes to opponent wise, yeah. uh, I I agree with you, Jake. Jake Paul definitely um, should not pick Nate. Nate, I I I think that Nate's gonna stop him in the fifth, maybe seventh, later rounds, just because. And that's assuming he, you know, fights like he fights because uh, Jake. I mean, he's getting tired. The way he fights, imagine when you have somebody on top of you. That was yeah. different. So, yeah, he's carrying a lot of weight to move around the way he does. So yeah. Um yeah. but yeah, it should be should be interesting. It's uh you know, with, with everything that's going on in boxing right now, you know, when he first came in, when Paul first came in, obviously we, we weren't getting the fights we wanted, but you know, 2023 right now. It's got to be yeah. one of the best boxing years in a long time. I mean, all the boxing heads I know and those who aren't even in boxing, you know, just casual fans are tuning in because there's a lot of there's been a lot of great fights and there's going to be yeah. a lot more to finish the year. Um, speaking of that, let's uh, let's jump on to uh, Spence Crawford. I know that's uh, it's obviously uh, at the time of this taping, it's. You know, less than two weeks away on the twenty on July 29th. Uh, today's yeah. the 17th. So the guys, I think they're coming this week to camp. They're coming this week to Las Vegas. I'm I'm based out of Vegas, so they're all headed out there to out here to acclimate. It's it's extremely hot out here right now. Um, but obviously these guys are are warriors and they're prepped and ready. They're going to be prepped and ready for the fight. Uh, before you before you say who you got, uh, what do you think? What do you think uh, first when the fight got made? Finally got made. Uh, I was I was I was uh, hoping that it didn't happen. What happened with Pacquiao and Mayweather? Yeah, because they fought, but but they fought when it was late. You know, like the peak of the Mayweather Pacquiao was two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Everybody yeah. was talking about it. Everybody, both in their 
time, and, and Pacquiao was looking good. He was knocking out. Uh, he knocked Miguel Cotto out in 2009. Um, he was good. He Everybody was looking good, but and then you got Pacquiao that fought Marquez and got knocked out. Then now it doesn't carry the same weight that it was carrying for that knockout. Yeah. It took too long. But, uh, I mean, I'm glad they did it because maybe, you know, it will um, get other fighters to do the same when they're in their prime. Because you know, that's the yeah. thing about boxing that nobody wants to fight nobody. It's not like MMA or the UFC where they, it's a company, so they're able to, to uh, make each other fight. And then it, it don't matter who wins, they still, their stock is still there, you know, in boxing. Yeah. It's just, it's just, you know, they, it's different, you know. They, everybody wants to uh, keep that good record and not fight nobody, and and you can do it for, for so long, you know. But sooner or later, you're gonna fight somebody, and when you fight somebody, then you know it, it's gonna be a whole different world. Um, but I mean, it, it's 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 good. It's it's gonna be a good fight. Um, what do you think of the matchup? What do you think? What do you think of like uh, their skill sets? Like who? Who do you think has the advantage in terms of skill sets, or you know, so, or is it just a fifty-fifty so fight? I, I, I think, I think uh, Crawford has the better skill set, and I say that because Crawford is able to uh, go southpaw and still look good. Oh yeah, and 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 people don't understand how hard that is. Like I do it in sparring, and I'm. I, Tiring us, it's still tiring because you're not, it's not just switching. It's now your brain is working twice as hard. Because even though me personally, as a southpaw, I get it, it's your hit to hit your opponent, but it's also you got to be careful with a lot, of, a lot of other stuff that you usually, you know, you're not what you would not uh, be aware of when you're when you're an orthodox fighter. Yeah. Um, but also, like, my number one rule is don't ever go southpaw against a southpaw, uh, that's my rule. But I mean, I know Errol Spence is a southpaw. I don't know if Crawford's gonna go southpaw against him. I don't think it would be smart. But, but wrong. Well, he's done it uh, pretty much every southpaw he's fought. He goes, he goes lefty. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, you're right. Yeah. Every um, say, I when when I used to work for Top Rank, I, I I I used to go out to not only for his fights in Oklahoma, but um, I went out to. Uh, uh, to actually his house, checked out his neighborhood, been to his gym multiple times. And um, he, uh, his story, I mean, I'm sure uh, he's told the story before, but um, we did it in an interview when, out, when we were out there, is that when he was, I think he was like 10 years old, he busted his right arm and he couldn't, they told him he couldn't box because it was broken, it was broken, right? Yeah. Um, so all he did was go in the gym you know, this is his mentality. For instance, the time he was a little kid, he didn't not, he didn't just stop. Like most kids would be saying, oh, I can't box. I'm just going to wait, right? No, he went in the gym and for, you know, three, four months, that's all he did was fight left. So, you know, he, he was, that, that, he there was. You go. I, I didn't know that. that. That explains a lot right there. Yeah. And so as a little kid, you know, he's, he's setting up those pathways in the brain to learn how to fight left. And that's how we mastered. That's how we mastered uh, the left hand as well as the right. So, um, yeah, he's he's pretty impressive. So, um, so what do you think? What do you think gives Spence the advantage? Just like in a perfect world, if it's Spence's night, what what's what's what are the advantages Spence has over over Crawford? I think he's just physically bigger. Um, I could be wrong. I haven't seen them both together, but like off fights that I've seen. Looks physically bigger than Crawford. Um, yeah. He's southpaw. He's a little bit more technical than Crawford southpaw because Crawford fights southpaw is kind of sluggish. Um, I yeah. feel that kind of like that Pacquiao way. Uh, and Spence is more of a straight punches, get out of the way. I I don't know, man. Like going to be a really really high end chess match and whoever makes the first mistake is going to pay for it um, yeah so, I, yeah i've um i've spent very little time 
in in terms of like being around Spence, I was at uh, I was at the fight when he fought. Uh, um, I just drew a blank. What's his name? Mikey uh, in in Perfect. Dallas. So I, yeah, I was working for um, I was working for Fox as a producer, and so got a little time to spend with him. And I and I've been around you know when he's when he makes appearances at fights and stuff like that. And I I always like to observe people and and the fighters and um, he's uh uh he's definitely he's definitely um confident and he's got his his set way of fighting like he's he's extremely proficient he's extremely technical in the in the way he fights like he is definitely well trained he's well disciplined he knows how he knows his strengths and he sticks to those strengths um and you know lately and I would say the past what, couple of fights when Ugas caught him, um, he he's he didn't used to get caught at all. And so that's one of the things where if, if he would have fought Spent, uh, if he would have fought Crawford right when Crawford won his belt, you know, um, what was it? Actually, hold on. Let me let me let me pull this up real quick. I'll show you this. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. So we got. So spent so Crawford so check this out Crawford won his belt against Jeff Horn in 2018, right? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Pardon the uh, what kind of ad is that? Uh, 2018. That's when he won. That's when he stepped up to welterweight and he won. So from that moment, he he was um, every but that's what everybody wanted, right? Everybody wanted that fight, and and it's my. My opinion is, um, I mean, I'll, I'll say it. I think Terrence is going to win the fight. I think it's not. I think it's going to be more like Hagler Hearns um, really? uh, versus. I yeah, I think it's going to be more Hagler Hearns than than you know Hagler Sugar or uh, Her, uh, Hagler Sugar Ray Leonard, right? Um, I just think that, and this is because I've been around him. Like I said, I've been to his house. I've talked to his mom. I've been in his house. I've had his mom's fried chicken. I've been around the guy and I've talked to his mom. Um, and, and it's the same thing that I feel about like Tyson Fury, like, um, Terrence Crawford, his father was a boxer. Uh, his grandfather was a boxer. His mother check, check this story out. And I haven't heard anybody talk about this. Cause to me, it's, there's, there's pedigree. There's like your genetics and then there's the way you're raised. Right. So Terrence, when he was a little kid, he got beat up. Right. And he comes home crying. You know what his mom does? And, and Terrence grew up in the hood. Like, I mean, his mom still lives there. This is hood. Um, his mom takes him by the ear, drags him down the, to the street to the kid whose house who beat him up, um, knocks on the door, gets the kid out, and Terrence couldn't leave until he beat that kid up. Wow. Crazy story. That's his mom. That's the mother he grew up with, right? And so he's just got this, this, this will that – is so so say it's a 50 50 fight right it's 50 50 fight skill wise there's no difference so what is the it factor to me the it factor is the fact that that terrence is a pedigree above spence right i think that he just has like he's the kind of guy that will go to hell that will die to to beat a guy like you're just not going to beat him he's undefeated um, and you're just, if, if you take it up a notch, he's going to take it up too. And that's just the way I've seen him his whole career. And I just feel like Spence has never taken the fight. And there's a lot of people who are Spence fans and I get it, dude, I am not taking anything away from Spence. I think Spence is a phenomenal talent and I, I take nothing away from him. So when it comes to Terrence, I got to look at what is that it factor between the two guys. And to me, like I'm putting my money on Terrence and I think. I think Terrence is by 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 the time we get to the tenth, eleventh, twelfth round, Spence is going to be struggling to figure out how to fight Terrence because Ty, Terrence has that quick uh, snapping punch that hurts. He's going to be working the body for 10, 10 11 rounds, yeah. and just like he did to Benavides, and I but I don't think he's going to mess with him this time. I really don't think he's going to met like he messed with Benavides for rounds if, until yeah. he decided, okay, now now I'm going to knock your ass out. 
I don't think he's going to mess with Spence that way. I think he's just going to hurt him. Man, he's made him wait since 2018. That's 2018. Spence could have been, uh, or Crawford could have beat him. He could have, he could have been a lineal champion, uh, two times, like back to back, basically. Um, he could have had big fights across the entire welterweight division. So that's money out of his pockets. That's championships out of his pockets. Terrence not going to forget. He's that type of guy that he's not going to forget that, right? So he's going to make him pay. He's going to make him pay for waiting because the guy who didn't want the fight, and 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 this is probably because, I, I mean, I know people in, within the boxing community, but just in general, Spence didn't want the fight. He's he's delayed the fight. Just like Mayweather delayed the fight with, uh, with, with uh, Pacquiao. I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter. The fight happened, right? But at the same time, you look at the fights were, were purposely delayed by the guy – by the A side. And and I think Crawford is just the type of guy who's going to make him pay for all those years that you took away that he could have made more money, that he could have been the lineal champion. I mean, and all these people, I, I remember when Terrence won uh at, at 140, right? He won the he won the belts. Um, he was at the top of the world, right? Everybody loved that guy. And then all of a sudden he gets up to 47. And then the fights don't happen. Then he's fighting. He's fighting Amir Khan. I mean, he's fighting guys that everyone's like, "Come on, dude, you're just fighting a bunch of nobodies." Well, all those nobodies, he kept on fighting because he couldn't get the PBC guys. Yeah. And now he's got it. And I, I just think he's going to make him pay. I think he's going to make him pay. I think Spence is going to. I mean, if Ugas can get to him, and and Ugas is a good, good fighter. They're going to take nothing away from Ugas. Um, if Ugas can get to him, Spence is going to have trouble with Terrence. He's going to have trouble. He's probably going to win the first couple rounds um, because Terrence starts slow. But Terrence may, because he's had so much time to think about him, I think he may end up just just going at him. He may just end up going after him after two rounds instead of waiting his typical four rounds to yeah, go at him. Yeah, Crawford, Crawford sometimes don't care. He just goes out there and just gets to the point, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and when he beat when when um when when he beat Porter, and his dad threw the towel in, right? I mean, Porter was still good, but he knew it was coming. The guys within the industry, the, the guys within the industry, they may not say it because they want to be politically correct or they don't want to piss off each anybody's side, right? Because everybody wants to get along behind the scenes, right? They may not say it, but but it was very telling when Mr. Porter threw that towel in and stop that fight, stop Sean from getting seriously hurt, right? He didn't do that against Spence. You know, they 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 went at it for the yeah. full 12 rounds. So to me, it's like he didn't he, – he may he may come out, Ms. Porter, and talk about, um, you know, the equal the, – the equality between the two fighters. But I'm sorry, that was very telling to the guys yeah. within the industry when, when Spence's father threw in that towel right away. It's like – because – Terrence is at another level. He will hurt a guy. He loves to hurt people. And he will hurt a guy just because that's his instinct. He will do it. Um, I, and so I, I just feel this. So. I could be wrong. Yeah, I agree. But, <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's just one of those things where I, um, I really feel like uh, I really feel that Terrence is going to punish him. He's gonna punish him. It's gonna it's gonna be a good fight. It's definitely gonna be a good fight. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. So so what do you think? Are you willing to to put yourself on record and give a prediction? <laughs> there, there's so many guys uh, who will not do a prediction. <laughs> it's yeah, up to you, man. You don't so, have to. No, yeah. so I, I don't care. I'll do it. I mean I could be wrong, but like I said, I just prediction. Um uh, I mean, th there's a high possibility of the fight going to the distance, and even if it does, I have Crawford winning. But there, there's also a, a, a high possibility. If, if anybody gets knocked out, it's going to be the later rounds. I and yeah. I believe Crawford's going to be able to stop him uh, in the later rounds, nine or ten. That's that's yeah. what I think. Just because that's that's assuming if he's busy, you know, like you is, you know. Now, like I said. I, I don't like as a, as an orthodox fighter I don't fight southpaws if they're southpaw but they bring up a good point that 
Crawford has done it. He's that talented. He's that good at being a southpaw because people don't understand southpaw is it's it's hard. You know, like if you're not a natural southpaw, that's a lot of work. You have to just yeah. practice, practice, practice. Make it make it stick to your brain. Like practice and then and do it. You know, because it's not just doing it. Just because you know how to fight southpaw, don't mean you know how to. You're gonna get tired probably faster because brain's working twice as hard going the other way now and yeah. uh Crawford's able to do that uh and um maybe spence is not going to be able to adjust to go on you know from south part of orthodox back and forth back because that is the thing P as fighters that that messes with us you know and um you know i think Crawford should be able to get the stop it's time to count or the uh the distance but i have him with yeah 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 we'll see we'll see i i just uh it's one of those things where the fight makes me smile it's like finally yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah finally yeah. i actually i took off work i like anybody that asked me to to work on those days any anybody come any calls come in i'm like nope sorry <laughs> <laughs> nice you know and it's funny because my fight was originally the 29th and then they announced oh, yeah. the fight so they switched it to Hey. Oh hell yeah! You yeah. can't fight on that night. Yeah, no. I was like, hey, I was always thinking like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of heading heading out there to Vegas for the fight the next day after my fight. We'll see how. I'm... Oh yeah, it's gonna be packed out here. I can't imagine how yeah. packed it's gonna be. So yeah, it, it'll, be, my, it'll be awesome. One of my buddies, matchmaker. So we might have the plug right there. Oh, cool. Let me, uh, let me, let me know, dude. I'm always, I'm yeah, always ready. <laughs> absolutely. I was with, for the, uh, Canelo plant fight. It was a matchmaker and he got us in. Oh, that's cool. Got his that's cool. And everything. So, yeah. uh, but I, yeah, I, I have see a... how everything goes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I got, I, I think I'm gonna go with anyway. In, yeah. I think he's more explosive, more, of a fighter he's in his time um yeah. on top of him playing fighting at home but not fighting at home but he's just really good hard hitting fighter i was like when yeah. he fought what he did to donito donaire i was like wow and i sparred uh donaire like uh eight months or nine months before he fought him oh yeah i didn't know i was I was struggling with Donaire. You know what I mean, he's yeah. a very high end, high chest fighter, you know? Yeah. And that just made me like, wow, put away Donaire like that. That's crazy. Yeah. No, that was, uh, um, well, I mean, the first fight was really good. Damn, that was such a good, the first, first uh, fight. fight. Was really, really good. Yes. But the yeah. second fight, in a way, was a different yeah. fighter. He just yeah. kind of kept going. No. I would have loved to have seen those two if Nonito was younger and in his prime because Nonito was wow. He was hard to like. I mean, guys could never figure him out early um, in his career. He had that hard, he was, crazy hook. Still does it, but oh, I mean, got that one punch knockout. Sorry, and it felt it. Remember when he uh, yeah. he got yeah. <laughs> he got smacked, yeah. and I thought he was going to go down. I was like, oh shit, yeah, because he's got that yeah. one punch knockout power. You know, yeah, when he, he did, I mean, uh, yeah, when no, he did no, to Montiel, yeah, oh, yeah, yes. yes, like I, I was there at ringside at that fight, and Montiel had like his whole side caved in. I had never seen that before. I mean, it was a big hole. You can see photos of it. There's photos of it, but his whole fa his whole face, like the side of him caved in, and then I found out that he didn't remember anything until like the afternoon the next day like there is from when the time he went down to the to like noon the next day he doesn't remember any of it like that's how that's how crazy i couldn't believe that the ref let him get up and keep fighting yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was, was like, crazy <laughs> that was the that nuttiest was thing i've ever seen um yeah yeah but no, yeah he still hits hard bro he, he hit me with that hook and i mean i was like oh shit it yeah hard what is it? Is it just pure power or the speed of it, or both? It's the the way it's it's the way he hits you with with the timing and the angle. 
Oh, okay. Moves a lot. Moves a lot. Yeah. So, like, here, and then you'll start trying to set up, and then he'll switch up on you. And then he had called me later on that night, told me, hey, you know, I saw a video on you, so I know how you fight. I knew you had that, that danger is over and right, so we just took that away from you, which he did. And I didn't notice it till afterwards, but I went after I noticed that I only threw it um, times, I think, there. Yeah, because I I I, probably, I rely on that a lot, and uh, but he just he's just doing things ten steps ahead, and then he'll set you up for that hook, you know, and yeah, that's, uh, that's what he did. He he caught me. I was I was like barely blocked it, but that hurt. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean you don't be. I mean, what is he? Forty years old now. I think he's gonna fight on the yeah, uh, he's gonna fight on the undercard for Spence Crawford, right? Um, yeah, that um, that undercard is really good. Yeah, surprisingly, right? Um, um, surprisingly, they got they got um, they got Spence and Crawford. Then they got Cabrera versus Pitbull Cruz. Yep, I, I, that's, that's gonna be a really good fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah and right. now they've and got Tonair. Yeah. yeah, and that's a world title fight too. I think so. Yeah. I mean, let me see. I think it is. Um, it is. Yeah, it is. I think it is. Let's see. Uh, I've got it activated. Oh, there it goes. Let's see. No Nito. Oh, no. They don't have it on Box Rick. Oh, they don't. Yeah, you're right. They don't have it on Box Rick yet. I looked it up, but I know that that uh, I think it's a, it is a world title fight from Fed. Yeah, it's a world uh, Box Rick. So I'm not a big fan of Box Rick. Um, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a world title fight. Can it be a good card overall? Yeah. Card overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. So is there anything, any, any other things you notice in the world of boxing? Uh, just, I mean... Like I said, everybody's fighting everybody. That's good. Yeah. Um, there's there's a, a, a lot of fights. The only thing that I don't that I'm not a fan of is zone kind of airing whatever they want to air. The like, zone, kind of crazy man. They they uh, I, I'm not surprised they're they're probably kicking themselves for giving Matchroom a billion dollars. Uh, yeah. Talk about. Talk about blowing a blowing a load that yeah, just wasted um wasted money. I mean they went from their anti pay per view model to having to do pay per views because they're not making you know yeah, financially no money. No. No. They've and now they're doing all these well they opened I mean, you know what's funny is uh that, that girl that uh flashed her boobs, um uh it, what's his name came out and Eddie came out and was against it. And I thought it was ironic because he's the one under his match room is the one that launched all of this social media fighting, right? Do you remember yeah. Jake Paul, his very first fight was under match room. So yeah. he's the one that started all this shit. And now it's come back. <laughs> now yeah. it's come back to where it's just like, come on, this, this yeah, is what they're, you. They're having anybody that doesn't even know what a jab is. Pop you on open there. that Pandora's like, box, man, and people are paying for it or people are watching yeah. it. So crazy, but they're probably not even paying that much because I, I know when when we did Chavez, um, when we did the the Chavez Junior fight versus Anderson Silva, um, we uh, we were approached by DAZN to purchase the fight, um, and they did extremely low six figures for that fight, like su like it was insultingly low how low they offered for that fight, um, so. If that's their model now, where they're instead of giving you know matchroom a billion dollars to where they're kind of nickel and diming, uh, I would imagine that they didn't give them very much money um, for those yeah. for, that, for the broadcast rights to that. So, um, yeah. but either way, they're still they don't have a lot of content, and they've never had a lot of content on their platform, and so they're sitting there doing their thing um, with whatever whatever they can buy whatever they can buy right now and it's and it's garbage it's garbage yeah, it's horrible, bro. Like they have, 
last Saturday, this past Saturday, I put it on, and there were some random ass girls just like models fighting. I was like, "What the fuck is this? Like, what is this?" Yeah, yeah. This I think crazy. the uh, the way in the way in for the girl that flashed her boobs. I don't even know her name. Um, uh, I think they they I think it was them. It could have been another uh, group of girl or two girls that fought, but they were making out at the way in, like in, when they did the face off. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I, I don't know yeah. if it's the same girl, but I, I I just saw it in my in my Twitter feed. Um, but I, I thought I, mean, I thought about it. I, wonder, I, I was wondering if that was the same girl that flashed her boobs or the same group, you know, two girls um, um, that did know. that. But I just know that like, they, don't, they, they, they fucking air anything. You know, and you, know, you, would, you, but, you wouldn't think they do that because they're a high end production company. Like their shit's uh, legit. No, they're 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 I don't, they just don't have as much money. I think you know, in in terms, they're not spending as much money on boxing and. And so that way they're not getting the fights. I mean, th- think about it. You got top rank that's got an oh, eight-figure deal, like big eight-figure deal with ESPN. Um, you've got Showtime that's doing um, – They Showtime really doesn't have a lot of non-pay-per-view fights on their platform. They've got like the the uh, the up-and-coming fights that they do, which aren't yeah. very expensive. Like they don't they don't get a lot – or they're not it doesn't cost them a lot of money. It's decent money, but not not a ton. And then they've got the pay-per-views, which the promoters pay for. But beyond that, I mean, just with just with those two platforms, just with just with Showtime and ESPN, they have the majority of the fighters. Yeah. Well, because you got you PBC. Think, what, what do you think about HBO? You think they're going to come back? Mm, no, no, I don't think so. I mean. What are they going to come back as if they were to come back? You know, with, could they get the whole? Could they get the band back together? I don't know. A lot of the a lot of the crew on the crew side, they went to the zone. I'm sure they would probably jump ship if they if they had the opportunity to come back. Um, because, but no, I don't. I don't think so. you know, you know, things ever since even even um, ever, ever since uh, HBO fell off, Michael Buffer, you don't see him as much either. Yeah, because he signed an exclusive with the zone. And that's why it's uh, the zone. Don't really use him. Nope. But Michael Buffer, I mean, he's got to be late seventies by now. So, you know, he's made his money. He's probably cool. I, I think they paid him a ridiculous amount of money to be exclusive. So he's got that deal. Maybe he works like six, six, seven times a year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, as a boxing fan, yeah. you want to see Buffer, right? Because because there's nothing yeah, bigger. That's, than that's the man right there, man. That's the man. Yeah. Yeah. Super nice guy too. Super nice guy, but no, he got he got um, he got swept up by DAZN, and and I'm sure for him, you know, he's he's making the money. But for the boxing fans yeah. who want to see him, you just don't get to see him anymore. So, uh, but the um, I was gonna say the uh, if HBO was to come back, the issue is, and this is why I don't think they will. They don't have anyone to come and any promoter to use, right? I mean, Golden Boy could they could they could probably hook up with Golden Boy. Maybe, yeah, um, because I don't, I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know the inside details when it comes to what Golden Boy has with the zone, because the zone, Golden Boy is pretty much when they do fights, which is not very often, they do it on the zone. So I don't know if they have an exclusive. Clearly, Matchroom has an exclusive. Um, top ranks with uh, ESPN. PBC is with Showtime. I think I think they could probably. I don't know if they'd want to deal with Heyman actually, because. Uh, they were – this is way back when, and this is just inside info that I knew at the time when that stuff was going on, is they were pretty much fed up with him just because he was such a difficult dude to deal with. He was fighting for, for the most money for his fighters, and he was good at manipulating them to do it, um, which is, you know, hats off to him for getting the most for his fighters. I don't, I don't knock him for that. But from a business perspective on HBO's side, they got tired of him. That's when he jumped ship to go to Showtime, right? And then that's when that that's when they do. I do remember when they, oh, HBO came out. We're no longer using any PBC fighters. Um, yeah. They came out and said that, and I thought that was one that was stupid of HBO to do that because they it clearly they took it personally. Um, but at the same time, I don't think that. Maybe it's with a new regime because obviously they didn't need a they need to bring in someone to, to run their boxing side of it. Maybe they could maybe they could woo with enough money 
PVC back into HBO. But the, I don't, I don't think they, I don't think they have a stomach for it. Plus, they have new ownership. HBO, HBO, and uh, you know, is is uh, what's it, what's their new platform? Max. Um, yeah, well, they dropped the HBO. Now it's just Max, which I don't understand. Oh, but yeah, the, the guy yeah. from Discovery bought. Yeah. The guy from Discovery bought Warner Brothers, which owns um, HBO, and and um, and I I just I don't see that dude getting in the in the boxing. But you never know. You never know. Boxing's big right now. You never, never, never know. Never say never. Yeah, if boxing keeps on having fights like this, where the guys are actually getting together and fighting, hell yeah, then you, then I can see it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. All right, brother. Well, I mean, it's uh, it's been good, good catching up with you, talking some shop, and I appreciate you getting on with me. Likewise, brother. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me. Thank. Yeah. You. Um. So yeah, we'll um. So, let me let me just wrap this up on the 29th. Boxing fans, non-boxing fans, casual fans, watch the Showtime pay per view. The Spence Crawford. You will if you want to watch. Uh, a fight that is not going to disappoint and it's going to bring you back into boxing. Watch this fight, man. Spence Crawford is going to, um, it's going to deliver. It's going to deliver, unlike Mayweather Pacquiao. Kind of knew we weren't going to get that what we wanted from that one, but this one, they're still there. They still got it. They're still hungry. They're still young enough to, to, to give the fans a really good fight. And style-wise, they match up. It's going to be an action fight. So I'm really looking forward to it. So so pay for it. Pay for <laughs> yeah. it. Support the fighters. Do Absolutely. not steal it. I know you guys think it's a victimless crime, but it is not. I know firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, man. But. Yeah, so, so fans out there, please pay for it. Watch it on the 29th. And if four, yeah, at least three out of the four, best fighters in the world in the ring so you know and i think it'll be that way when they're done when the day is done you're going to have whoever wins spence crawford will be number one in the world and whoever yeah, wins absolutely. and if in a way beats fulton he'll be number two in terms of like pound for pound yeah. that's just yeah that's that's the way it'll be after after the two. i agree so spence crawford they're Whoever wins, they'll be number one, and then in a way, or Fulton. If if Fulton wins, he won't be number two, but he'll be way up there, you know. Because if you can beat in a way, you obviously got some. So yeah. But um, but yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Um, and uh, yeah, let's do this again. If you're down, Absolutely. I'll do Absolutely, we'll do it again. So down. All right. Let me know. We're running. All right. All right, brother. Thank you. All right, man.